This is Shenton Park Station. Hello, I'm currently on Railway Road just to the south of the train station. This is where the train replacement bus stops are located for Route 906, operating when the trains are not running. Here there is also a pedestrian dedicated traffic light that you can use to cross the road with a very big sign telling you to explicitly use it and please do not cross if, if you're not using it. See, please use signaled pedestrian crossing to cross the road. Then you come up here and there's a small staircase to get up to the subway un underneath the tracks or you can use the ramp up here. There's also a row of bike, sh bike sheds here and one of them is opened up so let's take a quick look inside and see what it's like. All wet and damp, nothing in there. Okay, continuing up here and then you can go straight into the subway and access the island platform at this station. The underpass contains a lot of artwork displaying many different types of Western Australian trains, from the steam trains to m the modern day locomotive trains. The ceiling in here is very low, with even me almost hitting my head up there. Um, and then there is a ramp and a staircase to get up to the platform. The ramp is quite long but the staircase is on the right hand side. Yep, so here's a B-series train painted in the underpass and the interior of an A-series train as we see there. Yeah, pretty cool. So the station is located 6 kilometers from Perth in Fair Zone 1, serving the suburb of Shenton Park. So halfway up the ramp there is this point where you are right next to the tracks and the gate is very low so you can pretty much feel like you can touch the tracks right there, you're like you're right next to it. the trains rumble right past you right here. Um, yeah, it's just a nice little train spotting location right there and then as soon as you get up onto the platform there is one open station smart rider processor from the ramp and then a little hut. So this station is actually quite a busy one, I must say, probably one of the busiest simple hut stations there is in the network and that's also probably because it has a bus connection here, unlike many other hot stations, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, over there you can see the city, because this part of the Fremantle line is going northeast, southwest. It looks like there's just bush all the way up to it, although there's not. So, like all other stations, Platform 1 is for trains to Perth, and Platform 2 is for trains to Fremantle, with a ticket machine, information point, some seating, a defibrillator, a sanitizer, a system map, all the usual stuff located inside the small shelter. And the rest of the platform just has a bin, a lot of other open stations battery processors, although the one that is right above the staircase doesn't have a reader on it, which means you have to walk all the way there now to tag off. Don't know why though that's like that. And and the planter at the very end two adjacent opposite to each other right here. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so that's a very simple platform we've got here. Let's go and take a look at the bus stops now. Back down into the underpass we go. And you can see the sign bus stops route 908, 909, which is the circular route for train replacement buses to the left where we just came from. As you can see, but nope, we're going right now. And then you can go up the staircase and straight up or continue up the ramp. Oh, I just didn't say that the station originally opened on the 1st of September 1908 as West Subiaco and then it was renamed to Shenton Park in 1934. I'll just read the station now. Considering the bus stops we're about to see, the substantial shelter and the subway, I think that this station deserves three stars which is justified by the amount of people using it, even if it is just a simple hot station. And here we are, a PSP crosses across this pedestrian path right here, and then there is a bike shelter and a very, very small Transperth car park, which 
is not enough for all the commuters that would probably use this station every day. So there are some parking machines, but they've actually got a separate car park down there, which you can park in, but it says this is not a transport car park. There is no responsibility if your car gets damaged here because it's just some overflow car park since they don't have enough car parking space. And then two bus stops are located right there. You can see a 998 service is leaving right now. So here is the staircase down to the station. And the station sign is right there. So yes, this is one of the many stations that the circular route serves. Um, there's also some other services here, but that's just because of the Shenzhen College being right here. See, 8.46 a.m. there's a 24 service, and then 3.15 there's a 28 service. But basically it's just the circular route all the time. I don't know why this is counted as a bus interchange, like, it's just some stops on the side of the road. Then you could say, what, um, you know, like, City West is a bus interchange because it has 81 to 85 and the green cat stopping right next to it. Or Seaforth is a bus interchange because it has a stop for the 220 right next to it. Yeah, it's pretty weird. So as you can see, the Shantung College is right there, with the station being right there. So they're very close to each other. Students can get it straight off the train and into the school. So because of this, the station is actually served by a once-a-day special train pattern, which is the pattern D, which terminates at Shantung Park, which departs Perth at 8.25 a.m. and then gets here about 10 minutes later. I'll go and film that in a separate video where I continue my gotten playlist about secret routes. It also goes in the, in the other direction after school, but a few years ago it used to actually depart from Lock Street Station, which is very weird because that's one of the least used stations in the Fremantle line. So it was just departs from Lock Street, but that's because there's no sidings after this station. There is right after Daglish though, so that's just weird. The sidings after Daglish are not used, but if they were the one station later they would be used. So instead, the trains have to go all the way to showgrounds where there's lots of points to get between the different platforms there and then turn around as not in service. And that's why I saw that not in service train zooming by in the Karakata video. That was that D pattern train in the afternoon. So since they're there, they, they used to depart from Luxury, but then they were like, there's no point of that. No one really gets on at the least east station. I mean, I'm just guessing that it's pretty bad, so probably. So as you see the train station from up here, from this bridge which I just showed to you, this is actually probably, I think, the only one-lane bridge anywhere in Perth. And this is a bus-only bridge, which is used by the 998-999 to cross across the train tracks here, and has a set of traffic lights on each side. So as it comes down here, there's actually a right turn only, not, it's so weird, not left, right, so it forces you to cross the traffic. Here's one, an articulated TP3079, but it's not in service. But yeah, this is only for buses, and you can see three traffic lights, because it's a one-lane bridge, save money, I guess. Green, orange, red, and then the bus goes. So, that's just a cool feature, just to the south of the station.
emotions.